Dance with the fishermen and their dories, Kenway! This island's mine! Come at me and I'll cap you, bastard! It was your bloody imagination that landed us here, Kenway! I'll be damned if I let that mine make one more decision for me! Will you not talk to me, Vane? Are you fixed on this madness? Madness? <laughs> Nothing mad about a man fighting to survive, is there? I mean you no harm, you corker! Now, let's work this out like gentlemen. Oh, God! I've got a bleeding headache on account of your jabbering. Now, stay back and let me live in peace. I would if you stop filching the food I gather and the water I find. I'll stop nothing till you bait me back in blood. You was the reason we were out looking for slavers. And you was the reason Jack Rackham took my crew. Vain! I said not to follow! Jesus, you've lost your head, man! It's a fair exchange for finding these flintlocks and grenados. Listen, Vane. We can hunt with those guns. <laughs> and I mean to! Up, and I'll have to kill you, Vane! Bloody try! By all means! I see you coming, sir! I see you plain and clear! Ha 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 
<laughs> it's either you or me who's leaving this island alive, Welcher. Because I'm not going to sail again in a world cursed by your ugly boat. Nancy boy, you've only done half a fucking job. Fucking hell. Is this my reward for believing the best about men? For thinking that a bilge rat like you could muster up some fucking sense once in a while? Maybe Horner Gold was right. Maybe the world does need men of ambition to stop the likes of you from mucking it all up. <laughs> or maybe... You just don't have the stones to live with no regrets. <laughs> don't save me a spot in hell, Shanka. I ain't coming soon. Stealing a fishing schooner single-handed. Damn canny, Captain. As is taking back my brig from this pillock. Once again, I thank you both. This Billy Huff didn't last two months with your ship before he came limping back to Nassau. Took the pardon straight away. I had to, lads. That Rogers was on to me from the first. Hold your tongue, Rackham. So what now? Still chasing your elusive fortune? Aye, and I'm close. I've heard the sage is sailing out of Kingston on a ship called the Princess. Put your ambition to better use, Kenway. Find the sage with us. I've no stomach for you and your mystics, Mary. I want a taste of the good life. An easy life. No one honest has an easy life, Edward. And it's aching for one that causes the most pain. All right, Rackham. Back to retirement. Captain, have 
What news are they? This Bajan works for the Royal African Company. Tell him what you told me. I haven't seen the princess for eight weeks or more. Meaning she may soon be back. What else? I thought this buck belonged to the other men who was asking about the princess this morning. So I told him that... What other men? Potty sailor in plain rags. And a gent with a scar just here. Where have they got to? Staying just round the corner, they said. I grow tired of chasing these fantasies of yours, Edward. As does the crew. Hang in there, man. We're getting close. It's that brazen Queen Bloody Nanny again. You alerted the men? We're short on time. Aye. There'll be two soldiers waiting for us at the crossroads. Very good. If you don't mind me asking, sir, what's the meaning behind these blood samples we're taking? Torres tells me that blood is required for the observatory to properly function. How do you mean, sir? If one wishes to use the observatory to, say, spy on King George, then one would require a drop of the king's blood to do so. In other words, a small sample of blood gives us access to a man's everyday life. Does Torres mean to spy on me, then? 
I've just given him a sample of my blood. As have I, Captain Hornigal. As will all Templars. It is a measure of insurance. And trust, I reckon. Yes, but fear not. Torres has shipped our samples to a Templar safe house in Rio de Janeiro. And it will not be the observatory's first subjects, I assure you. Aye, sir. I suppose it's a small price to pay for what the Templars have given me in return. Precisely. Governor, when you hunted pirates in Madagascar, what methods were the best? I believe it was my charisma that persuaded them. Violence and threats should always be a last resort. In Madagascar, I offered those pirates a choice. Take a pardon and return to England penniless but free men, or be hanged by the neck until dead. Just as you did in Nassau. Precisely. A pity Commodore Chamberlain did not live to see my thorough success. It's not like you to blow, Rogers. We all deserve a moment, don't we? And master, welcome. Buenas noches. What have you heard? The princess was taken by pirates six weeks ago. And so far as we know, the sage Roberts was still aboard. Very good. There is something. And what measures are we taking to recover the princess from these pirates? Captain Hornigold has dispatched some of his best men to ensure the sage is kept. What of the sage's present location? Africa, your excellency. Africa? By Which do not favor that one? I concur, Grandmaster. I should have sailed there myself. One of my slave galleys would be more than capable of making this switch. Slave galleys? Captain, I ask you to digest yourself from that secret situation. I say there is a difference between enslaving some men and all men. Our aim is to steer the entire course of civilization, is it not? A body enslaved inspires the mind to revolt. But enslave a man's mind, and his body will follow on. Natural, efficient. A fair point, Brad. Hold mine. <laughs> And 
What measures are we taking to recover the princess from the Captain Hornigold has dispatched some of his best men to ensure the sage's capture. Hmm. What of the sage's present location? Do you know? Africa, Your Excellency. Africa? By God. The winds do not favor that. I concur, Grand Master. I should have sailed there myself. One of my slave galleys would be more than capable of making a swift journey. A slave galley? Captain, I asked you to divest yourself of that sick institution. I failed to see the difference between enslaving some men and all men. Our aim is to steer the entire course of civilization, is it not? A body enslaved inspires the mind to move But enslave a man's mind, and his body will follow on. Naturally. A fair point, Grant. Sage's present location. Africa, Your Excellency. Africa? By God. The winds do not favor them. I concur, Grand Master. I should have sailed there myself. One of my slave galleys would be more than capable of making a swift journey. Slave galley? Captain, I asked you to divest yourself of that city. I failed to see the difference between enslaving some men and all men. Our aim is to steer the entire course of civilization, is it not? A body enslaved inspires the mind to revolt. But, enslave a man's mind, and his body will follow on. Natural, efficient. A fair point, Grandmaster. Africa we look Principe, sir, a small island. We've sent two of our best men, Burgess and Cochrane. Privateers with fast ships and firm hearts. Edward Kenway! Imagine my surprise at seeing your jackdaw anchored there. Have you heard all you came to hear? Will you now rescue the sage from our clutching hands? A pox on you, traitor! You sold us down river. Because I found a better path. The Templars know order, discipline, structure. But you never could fathom these subtleties. Goodbye, old friend. You were a soldier once, when you fought for something real. Something beyond yourself. Come on, don't lose the thing! 